Hello, this is Dale, and welcome to this video um, where I will be writing a reaction diffusion system from scratch. I will be using the processing programming environment, which is Java-based uh, and quite easy to learn, quite easy to use, and quite easy to get something up on screen without too much code. So with all that said, let's get started. Um, this is what we see when we open a new project in processing, just a blank file. So we need two main functions. Um, we need a setup uh, and we need draw. Okay. So in our setup we want to uh, we want to initialize the window size. Uh, so let's make it 256 by 256. Uh, and what else do we want? Um, let's, well, let's just run that and see what happens. Okay, it just creates a window. Uh, now let's write to all the pixels. So the way to do that is to write a nested for loop, uh, int y equals zero, y is smaller than the height, plus and we do do that for the for every row so for every column we go through every row uh, that's the width of the screen uh, and we want to plot pixels uh, there is um, we could try to plot every single pixel, but a better way to do that would be to access the pixels of the screen itself. So the way we do that is we can load pixels. That will give us access to the underlying pixels of the window. And then we can update, uh, update pixels. And in here, <coughs> excuse me, um, in here we have access to the pixel array. Uh, it's a linear array and we want to go through the uh, full screen so we're going through X and Y. We want to convert X and Y into a linear index into this array and we do that simply by doing that. Okay and we want to specify some color. Uh, let's just specify red for the moment, 255, just to see that it works. Okay, there we go. So we're painting to the uh, pixel buffer. Uh, let's do random times 255. Uh, maybe cast that to an int. Okay, there we go. We're just writing random pixel data uh, to the, well, the red channel. So we've got it all working. We've got access to our pixels. Now we need, in order to do, to make a reaction diffusion system, we need um, a dish of chemicals. And the way we're going to do it, so we need a 2D array um, of two uh, floating point values. So we need like a, an A and a B chemicals. And not only that, but we need two of them. And the reason we need two is because while we're reading from one of them, we're writing to the other. And then we swap them. And then, you know, we do the, the same again. So we're always reading from the old buffer and writing to the new buffer. Um, so we don't overwrite kind of half the data as we're reading it, if that makes sense. Um, it's It's a a system called ping-ponging, which you can look up. Um, so we're going to need a dish. So let's create a global uh, array. Um, okay, so 
let's make a multi-dimensional array. So we'll have array of floats and we want uh, it's actually going to be four dimensional like that so we'll call that the dish okay um, and in setup we will create it so dish equals new float so what are these dimensions? Well, the the end dimension is uh, we need two floats per pixel, so that's just going to be two, a a and b chemicals, and we need enough to fill the screen, so we need width and height. Oh, height. Uh, we've already set width and height using this function, so our dish should be the same size as our screen. And we need two of these dishes. So the first, um, the first index will be the which dish we're reading from and writing to. Okay, let's run that to see if there's no errors. Okay, what's next? We need to initialize the dish. Uh, void the call clear dish. This will just initialize it with random values. Uh, let's see, so we can copy this. Oh, we're going to need one other thing at the moment. Uh, my copy paste is not working. This keyboard is a bit strange. Okay, so we're not writing to pixel data, we're writing to this dish. Uh, dish something uh, x y zero equals random so <clears throat> uh, yeah we, we want to initialize the both chemicals of the first dish that's what we're doing here and uh, we don't need to do both dishes because we're going to just be reading from one writing to the other so the other one will immediately get overwritten uh, but we do need to specify which one we're reading from. So let's have a variable uh, called uh, back buffer, and we'll initialize it to zero. And we can also initialize it in here as well, so we can clear the dish whenever we want. Okay, and we want to clear. We want to set all the values. Uh, in the back buffer for both chemicals. Okay, and so let's make sure that that's called after we've created the dish. Okay, and now we need to show it. So here's the red, green, and blue components. We can keep blue at zero, but we want to display the two chemicals in the red and green channels. So uh, we want dish and which dish? We want the back buffer and we want x and y and zero. So that's our chemical A, but it's, um, it's in the range zero to one. So we want it. Um, we want to cast it to an int, and also we want to multiply it by two five five, and that will that will turn it in eventually turn it into a byte. Okay, and we just do the same for the other chemical for the green channel, and that should be it. So if we run it now, we should just see random pixel data. Oh, there we go. So that's our initialized dish with just random data. Uh, okay, now we need a function to update dish. Now this is a bit more complicated. Um, so again we're going to be uh, going through each pixel. Hmm. 
Now we have the back buffer, that's the one we're going to be reading from. We also need to know which um, is the front buffer, so we'll just create it in here. Front buffer equals back buffer uh, XOR with one. Now what this will do is um, back buffer, oh down here, we're going to uh, we're going to flip the buffers, so we'll do back buffer equals front buffer. Okay, so what this does, every frame, uh, we've got the back buffer and we set the front buffer to be not the back buffer. So if back buffer is zero, then front buffer will be one, and if back buffer is one, then front buffer will be zero. So we're ping-ponging between the two of them. And down here, once we've written uh, to the front buffer, then we just swap them. We make the front buffer the back buffer. Uh, so we're always going to be uh, in here. Uh, is that right? Yeah. So in here, we're always going to be reading the latest um, data for to set the colors. Okay. So what do we do in here? We don't need this. Um, so reaction diffusion works, um, there's a reaction part and a diffusion part, funnily enough. So um, what is diffusion? Diffusion is like a blurring. We need to blur the values um, in, in the dish. So how do we do that? Uh, Okay, first let's get the, let's extract the current uh, chemical concentrations. So float A equals dish uh, reading from the back buffer and at x, y and chemical zero. And likewise, chemical B is like that. So we've got the chemicals for this pixel, for this uh, time step. Now we want to blur them, so we have to look at the neighbors. So let's create uh, a variable called the Laplace, which is basically a, a fancy name for uh, a mathematical system of blurring. Let's just put it that way. Um, and we'll initialize that to zero. Now we want to fill it with the neighbors, the concentrations of the neighbors. The problem is um, we have to deal with the edge cases. So uh, for example, so let's, um, let's do this. Uh, we want to get the, the concentration of the pixel to the left. So that looks like that. And oh, ah, what happened there? So we want the left and then the right and then above and below. Okay. But we have to deal with the uh, edges. So if x is zero, and we read x minus 1, we're going to be reading at a position minus 1, and that's going to be out of bounds, um, at, which would be bad. So we need to make sure that uh, it doesn't do that. So we can use this construct. Uh, I think that's the ternary operator. Um, so if this is true, what's, whatever's in here, so if x is bigger than 0, then we return whatever's to the left of x. Um, but if it is zero, then we don't want to read out of bounds, so we'll just return a. Okay, and we can just do that for the others. Uh, like that. So if x is bigger than zero, then we want to read to the left. If x is smaller than width minus 1, then we read to the right. If y is greater than 0, 
then we want to read above. And if y is smaller than height minus 1. OK, and that will give us our, oh, we need to, uh, we need to get the average of them. So we need to divide by 4, like that. So that will give us our kind of average of the neighbors around the pixel for the chemical A. And we can do the same for chemical B, uh, like that. And we need to make sure that we're reading chemical B. And B. It's easy to make a typo when copy pasting. So just check that's correct. Uh, that seems to be. OK. Uh, actually, let's call this old A and old B. Here we'll create new A and we'll just set it to old A. So at the moment nothing is changing, but we want to modify the new A and we want to store it in the front buffer. Front buffer blah 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 equals uh, new A. That. So that will, once we've calculated, we're going to do the reaction and the diffusion part in here. We'll be, we'll be manipulating new A and new B. Um, and then we store them in the front buffer. And then down here, the back buffer becomes the front buffer, and then so on. And every time we iterate through this, we're kind of progressing the system. We're evolving the system. Oh, we don't want that. Like that. We want to be specifying this chemical and for this pixel. Oh, whoops, that wrong. Okay, so if we run that, I think it will do nothing because it's just um, copying the, the data from the previous dish to the new dish and vice versa. So it shouldn't do anything. Right, that's correct. Now, if we do the, uh, let's do the diffusion first. So the diffusion, um, we want to pull the value of um, the chemical concentration towards the average of the neighbors. That will, in effect, blur the screen, right? blur the chemical concentrations. So how do we do that? Well, we add um, the the perfect blur minus the current situation, the current chemical concentration, uh, old A, and we multiply that by uh, a diffusion, I'll type, diffusion uh, factor, which we will create up here. Fusion A equals, uh, let's just set it 0 0.5 to begin with. And the same for B. And so we are blurring both chemicals at the same rate. Okay, so can you see what we're doing there? Um, uh, this value is the, the kind of the target value and this value is the current value, and so we're getting the error between them, and then we're adding a, we're adding a portion of that to the value that it is. So we're heading towards this. Okay. Um, so let's see what that does. And it does nothing. Hmm. Hmm. Why is that? Okay, uh, I realized I'm not actually calling this function. 
That was a bit silly. So uh, I will call it in the draw loop just before we do the actual drawing. So now when I run it, there we go. So it's actually just blurring the values. And so it's um, turning this sickly dark yellow because that's, um, you know, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 uh, for the red and green components. So that's the diffusion part done. Now we need to work on the reaction part. Now, uh, if we go to have a look on Google, uh, I've looked for reaction diffusion. So you can see what the reaction diffusion system is like. Um, these systems are capable of all kinds of um, behaviors. So we get these kind of strange spirals. We get this strange kind of maze, very organic looking. We get like spots and uh, stripes. And we get, we get this kind of like spots and stripes, you know, changing into each other. And, um, you know, it's all very like organic and um, blood vessels and, uh, yeah, kind of heartbeats and, uh, you know, these reaction diffusion uh, systems describe a lot um, of biological systems, like pattern formation, um, you know, in, in everything, like the, the way the heart pumps, the way the fingers grow, the way the, um, you know, the blood vessels are laid down in the body, the way nerves grow, and that kind of stuff. So they're all very interesting, and the point is that they're very, um, they're capable of a lot of different types of behavior. So we're going to explore that today. So the one that we're going to look at is called the Gray-Scott model. And basically it looks like this. Here are the equations. So here they've got chemicals U and V, whereas I call them A and B. Um, this, this part here is the reaction part, uh, sorry, is the diffusion part. And so this, uh, this is the Laplace operator. So this is the, and this is the, um, the factor that I call diffusion A and diffusion B. Um, so that controls the rate of diffusion, these two parameters. So this is the diffusion part, and this is the reaction part. And you can see that um, the way, this is the change of chemical U and the change of chemical V, and they depend on each other. So you've got, you've got U and V in both of these equations. So they're kind of interacting with each other in a very complicated way. And it's non-linear. So we've got this, um, yeah, we've got, we've got like a, a complicated equation. So that leads to complicated dynamics. So let's go back to processing and implement it. So let's, oh, what was it? So UV uh, squared plus F. F is a, a constant. It controls the parameters of the system. We've also got K. So these two parameters will be what we use to control the behavior of the system. So let's just set them up here. Float f equals, uh, I'm going to set it to be uh, 0 0.07 uh, and the same for k. I think that's, from memory, that's a good, that will lead to interesting behavior. So uh, we want mu a plus equals something. Um, also, I want the ability to control the rate of these reactions. So I'll have another factor. I'll call it reaction speed times the reaction part of the equation. Okay, and reaction speed, let's just set it to be 0 0.1 for now. Okay, go back to this, and it's minus uv squared. Okay, so we've got minus uh, a times b times b. Okay, that's uv squared plus something. I forget what it was. Uh, plus f times one minus uh, the first chemical a plus f times one minus a. Okay, uh, I will just flip this round.
go as I can. Uh, and let's do B. B is going to be something in here. And B is uh, UV squared minus F plus K times V. So that's uh, A times B times B minus F plus K times uh, V. Okay, and finally we can all see the optimization there. A times B times B. Okay, we don't need to do this calculation twice. So that's our reaction part. Uh, oh, there's no F. Okay, uh, and it's not A, is it? It's old A. Old B. Okay. Let's run that and see what happens. Uh, not an awful lot. Well, something's happening. It's not fading to the uh, sickly yellow. So this reaction is doing something, um, but it seems to be that it's just causing um, the first chemical, the red chemical, to saturate and the, uh, the green chemical to die out. And probably the reason for that is because these two, reaction, these two diffusion constants are the same and we don't want them to be the same. Uh, we want, I think, A to be about five times bigger. Um, let me set this to one, but I think it might cause some kind of numerical problems. Uh, let's see if that works. Oh, can something? Yeah, it looks like it's not happy with such a high diffusion. I have to lower it a little bit to keep the numbers from exploding. So, I think I will set this to be less than one. No, still not happy. Okay, that's looking a bit better. And it's probably because my reaction speed is too low. Let's bump that up. Mm -hmm. Getting there. Okay, it's probably these uh, values need a bit of tweaking. Oh, there we go. That's what I thought would happen. That's, um, yeah, these values are too high. So, this keyboard is a bit strange. Um, Okay, I think I can solve this by searching for a for parameter space. So I don't know what values to set these, and I don't want to keep messing with the values in order to find out good values. So if we look back at here, uh, the gray Scott, uh, it's got some nice uh, pictures of what patterns it can create. Um, not here. Uh, gray Scott. <laughs> reaction fusion. Um, this here is like parameter space. So uh, this shows like F along this axis and K along this axis and it shows how the behavior changes when you change the parameters. So if we select F and K from this area we'll get um, interesting results. But if we get if we select them from this area, then we get boring results. So I don't really want to keep um, messing with the values until I get um, some good behavior, because there's quite quite a good chance of me not finding it. So uh, let's actually try to create something that looks like this. Let's vary F and K along the axes of our uh, dish. So <coughs> uh, let's... Uh, 
let's do this. Fy equals y divided by 8 times 1.0. So this will uh, give us a value Fy, which ranges from 0 to 1 in the vertical axis. And we can do the same for x. Okay, and in, inside this uh, update, we can actually set f to be, uh, let's see, fx. This is the f parameter of our equation. And fx runs from 0 to 1 uh, horizontally. So we need to multiply that by 0.1 to make the right range. And we'll do the same for k. Okay, okay. So now we're exploring parameter space and we're starting to see real patterns. Good, good, good. Uh, it's all very small at the moment and um, we can change that by having a slower reaction speed. So the reaction part is weaker than the diffusion part. We can't increase the diffusion part because otherwise we'll get it to explode. Um, maybe we could increase it a little bit. Uh, let, let's not do that for now. Okay, so now it's much slower, but the patterns are larger. Okay, so it's looking quite nice. Um, it's doing what we expect it to do. It is a reaction diffusion system. Um, it's a bit, a bit slow though, so let's uh, do 10 iterations per frame. Okay. Okay, that's faster. That's looking good. Okay, let's see how high we can push these diffusion uh, coefficients. Okay, that's not going to work. We knew that. Okay, I think we'll leave it there. Um, so basically we've got a reaction fusion system. That's, that's what we've got. Um, okay, I would like the ability to kind of mess with it, so let's do that now. Uh, there's a function called uh, mouse drag, I think it is. Yep, mouse drag. <clears throat> so we want to draw a box wherever the mouse is. So let's do a 4x, 4y loop, which we can just steal from here. Okay. And we, want, we don't want to go through the whole screen. We want to go through from uh, x min to y max. Sorry, y min to y max. And x min to x max. Now, uh, what is x min and x max? Uh, int x min equals... Now we want the mouse position minus, uh, let's put a radius uh, or a size, we can't call it size, int r, let's call it r. So it'll be half the size of our um, brush. Um, so if we subtract that from the x to get our x minimum, and we add it to x to get our maximum. And the same for y. Now you may be able to see a problem already. Um, in here, let's set the dish, the back buffer at x and y of chemical zero to be, uh, let's say, zero. 
and we'll set the green chemical to be one. Now, the problem here is that um, this these values can go outside of the uh, screen, which will cause a problem. So we need to kind of constrain them to the screen. So we want to get the maximum of this value and zero. So that that will clamp it to the the left edge of the array, the the dish, because uh, if this value is less than zero, then the maximum of these two will be zero. So it's clamping to the left edge. And so if we do the same for the others, uh, this one is zero. This one is width minus one. And this one is height minus one. There you go. So that will clamp our values and we do a nested loop across the area of the brush and we set the values of the back buffer of the two chemicals to zero and one. Okay, let's just see if that works. And there we go. You can see that I'm, I'm painting green into the, uh, the system. Good, that's working. And of course it dies out and uh, yeah, depending on the, uh, the parameters of the system. Good, good, good. Uh, okay, so let's now um, not do this. Uh, but we, we want to be able to control Oh, there we go. Just needed the right initial conditions. And there we have a reaction diffusion system. Okay. Um, let's try and speed it up. I don't know how much my computer can do. Um, but see if we can do 100 iterations per frame. Ooh, he's not happy with that. Yeah, that's not good, is it? Let's take it down to, say, 40. Mm, still not happy. Okay, I think this is probably our uh, limit. Okay, but there's a reaction diffusion system. Um, it all works. And um, it looks lovely. I, I, I just love the different um, behaviors of these systems. Uh, as a final thing, why don't we, uh, let's see, instead of doing that, uh, why don't we set F and K to be um, specified oops, by the mouse position. Okay. Sorry, I'm not good at typing on this keyboard. Uh, width and height, and that wants to be Y. Okay, so now the position of my cursor is dictating the F and K values. Oh, let's, let's take that down to 10. I was right the first time. Okay. So, if I paint in here, um, it's just immediately gonna die out because this parameter, uh, these parameters specified by my the position of my mouse pointer um, just lead to uninteresting behavior. But if I search for a good place, in this, oh sorry, that's why I need to put it into the right range. Uh, 
There we go. So now I can paint, but I've got to be careful because the position of my mouse pointer is affecting the parameters. So if I move my mouse pointer around, we can explore that space and explore the different dynamics. So over here we can get, I think, spots. Maybe. Ooh, don't die out. There we go. Over here we get spotty behavior, maybe. Or maybe over here. Oh yeah. This is more robust behavior. Oh, down here is the spots. Okay, anyway, that is a reaction diffusion system, and that is also has the ability to explore parameter space to find the interesting behaviors. Uh, it's quite fun to do. And um, yeah, you've got all the code now, so um, you can try to make it yourself. You know how to do it. It's not too difficult. Um, and uh, yeah. Let me know if you find this useful and if you've learned something. And uh, if you do any reaction diffusion of your own, please let me know because I'm always interested to see what other people are doing. And uh, that's it. So have fun and please go ahead and explore. Okay, that's all for this video. Thanks for listening. Bye.